اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لو انزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأیته خاشعم متصدعم من خشیت اللہ و تلک الامثال ندربها للناس لعلہم یتفکرون صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The verse which I have recited is from Surah Al-Hashr, chapter 59, verse number 21. Allah says, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلِلْ If we had sent this Qur'an on the mountain, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا Sent down on mountain لَرَعَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِّنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ You would have surely seen that the mountain would come in humbleness and becoming apart مِّنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ from the fear of Allah وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْسَالُ نَدْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ and we have given these kind of similitude and examples to the people so their mind may reflect. Chapter 59, verse number 21. This is exactly the magnitude of the book. Al-Quran, the Holy Quran, the final testament from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, if we divide Bible into testaments you can say Old Testament New Testament and Quran is the final testament so if something is final it means it has everything to tell to the humanity till the doomsday till Yom al Qiyamah and it's like preserving is guarding whatever the propensities are in the previous books it is correcting and then it is guarding itself. Otherwise, if the document is dubious, it cannot go for eternally. So this is the magnitude of the Holy Quran. And Allah says that, look at the size of the mountains. Mountains are unable to bear the magnitude of this book. And they will be so humble. Mountains will become humble. From the fear of Allah, they will become Muslim or they will bow down or they couldn't grasp this magnitude of the book, Al-Quran, which we humans are taking so easy. Today the topic is about what we ought to do and what we have actually become. You see, Allah gives the example in the Quran in Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, verse 179. Allah says, if you do not listen to the book of any guidance, if we can say the guidance right now is only Quran, but actually the point is mentioning about Jews and Christians on and on and the philosophy that if we do not do anything pertaining to the guidance then we are just like cattle al an'am meaning like cattle what are the cattle in agriculture in farming what do they do it's just like a role that you are doing something just like animals wake in the morning wake up in the morning then get married procreate then worry about your children, worry about their education, then let them grow and just nurture them and die. Exactly this is what cattle does. So what Allah is trying to say that if you do not do your stuff in the right manner, you are no more than the cattle. And this is actually exactly what's happening. Nowadays, you see, you rather call it social media, the people in social, social media or in actual life, they're meeting you. Everyone is acting like a cattle. That we have our objective. What are our objectives? 
Only five things. This is what we are all just beating around the bushes. Food, clothing, shelter, rest and sex. Above these, we don't have any par excellence concept. Because we have become economical animals. And once you become economical animal, you don't see what are the things which are par excellence. Unfortunately, this is what Allah is referring to. When you become cattle, this is what your destination is. You see, the best example for the whole world is to be found in the biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example for the humanity in the sight of Allah is to be found in the stature of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Either by knowingly or unknowingly, either by consciously or subconsciously, you ought to follow him. There is no other way Whatever your role model, whatever your hero, whatever you find your complacency, it is not befitting for the culminating or optimal solution for the humanity. There will be flaws. The only person who is flawless in his all matters and affairs was Prophet Muhammad of Arabia. You see, the Western civilization is totally Quranic. You don't know about this. Many Muslims are not aware. You see, when Muslims were ruling Spain and all the European countries, many Christians and all other nations, they used to come to study in the universities of Cordoba, University of Granada, Granada, University of Toledo, and they learned all these sciences. And then they took this message to the Europe but they were afraid because of this papacy, this Pope, he was not letting people to study scientific research or books. And even the Bible were, was not in their hands. They were not allowed to keep Bibles to only the vicar of Christ or diocese or some special people or committee. They were having all these privileges to access the Bible. But ordinary man, Tom, Dick and Harry, not at all. Even there were severe punishments for those people. Inquisitor, inquisitors, you know that those people, what did they do? This inquisitor, those people, what did they do to the people? You know that. And we call it, they call it inquisition. Christian inquisition and you know what happened in those days. So these, these are the points here that Allah says in the Quran that if we have no objective, if we have no roadmap, if we have no agenda in our lives, then we are just like cattle. Why Allah has put down to this world? You see science, atheists, they are worrying about, look, what is this life? How this is all started? The people of faith, they know Allah has created. It's like a divine intelligence. This divine intelligence has created all these things. Everything is calculated. Everything is numbered. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Quran, that of mankind and jinn, the only reason I have created you to worship me and how to worship Allah, just to pray five times a day, is that worshipping only? No, it means what Allah has given you the mission to this world, you ought to follow. Number one problem right now, the biggest problem is humanity. We have no empathy towards any fellow men. We don't have any empathy towards not disbelievers. We don't have any empathy towards our own believers. Why? You see in Pakistan, there are many Christians working in homes. Nobody is giving them any kind of, you know, comfort zone or to convert them or to revert them or to try to persuade them or to help them. What the concept is? Racist. Muslims in Pakistan, they don't like or oblige to invite anyone. They think they are better than them. 
Allah knows who is better in front of Allah's sight. Remember that. Don't judge people from their faith. You don't know. You have no idea what their structure is in front of Allah and what, you, what is yours. So the sublime nobility of position comes with your mission and agenda. If you have no goal or agenda, don't think that you are privileged or you have some special prerogatives because you are born in the house of Islam. This is all a haze and your own wishful hallucinations or desires, your own feelings. You are living in euphoria or ecstasy like born again they live in America that if somebody is born again, that's all. His life is extricated and salvaged. Now he has you know, nothing to worry. This is what same thing Muslims are living to. They think we read the Kalima of Rasulullah. So we are obliged and scot-free for every responsibilities and all these missions and agendas. Busy in earning money. Busy like a cattle. Just making dreams. Okay, get, get five things which are the needs. Then go next for the wishes. Then create wishes and wishes. And the wishes are infinite, never ending. And your heart and body and your soul keep working, keep working. Because the spirit, soul is always powerful, body is weak. So have some rest next day. Keep getting that circle again and again. Never think what is your purpose of your creation. What is the purpose of your creation and our creation? Is to just earn money? Ta'isu abdu dinar wa abdu dirham. Prophet Sallallahu says, Woe to the person who is the slave of dinar and dirham, who is the slave of money. Jesus Christ said, It is harder for a poor man to enter into heaven. A poor man. As same as you pass the camel into the eye of a needle. This is what examples are given. Prophet Sallallahu says, That the poor will be the first who will enter into Jannah. And people think the riches and all these things are something remember that if you don't have guidance your riches your values and everything is the test and the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have all the blessings providence or provisions and you have guidance this is the ni'mah blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people think that i have children i have money and i have everything I don't, you don't need to worry about people die in the poor, that we don't care. Remember that you are in the wrath of Allah. Allah is testing you, then Allah will suddenly catch you for the account. This is in the Quran. So, your hadaya and your ni'mah together is something blessed life. If you have opposite, don't think it's a blessed life, it is a test which will be a very which will be having a very severe consequences is the matter of time the time will tell you because time is the best notion allah says in the quran wala asr by the passage of time i take the oath innal insana lafi khusr indeed the humanity is in great loss Except those who believe and does righteous deeds and persevere. This is the test. You have to persevere. Allah will surely test you from fear, from the loss of your children and from the loss of your businesses. And Allah will see who is amongst the most perseverant. So this is the test. All these things are test. Allah said the time is the most important thing in this world. But what are we doing? What are we doing? Listen, see ourselves, evaluate yourself, assess yourself. What are we doing? Intellectual paralysis, no intelligence, no roadmap, no agenda, all the sweat and the blood and the money into materialism. But materialism should be coming. It should always be important. Materialistic lifestyle. You need first a small shack. No, after a small shack, I need a small flat. Now I need a small house. Then I need a small house. No, I'm not happy. I need a ranch. 
and then I'm not happy, I need a, what you call penthouse, I'm not happy, I need a palace. Then what? Then what after that? Where are you gonna go? This Elon Musk, where can he go with all his 250 billion dollars? Tell him, can he jump? Can he jump to the heavens? He can't even even do that. But talking about great things about with pompous bombastic attitude and what are you in reality nothing not even speck out of speck all the billion years listen the hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ says that if Allah has the value or importance of this whole universe more than a wing of a fly then Allah wouldn't be giving any provision to the disbelievers you don't believe in Allah no problem because Allah has no value of these all things in the world you lumped up all universe together with 165 billion light years of traveling this is worthless in front of Allah that is why he's giving you provisions if he has anything importance more than a wing of a fly your life would have been seized forfeited excommunicado in one second so this is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's latitude and greatness that he is free for giving us with our all propensities absurdities and atrocities we are doing towards each our brethren and fellow men guys the message from my lecture is live for others show some empathy to others even if a disbeliever or a believer because all are the children of Adam one are the people who are Muslim one are non-Muslims all of them are the believers sorry all of them are children of Adam -Islam, and one is the nation which needed your propagation and one is the nation which needed instruction unto righteousness Talqeen one is Talqeen another is Tabligh both are the children of Adam so we ought to do this job Muslims should always keep calling those people into the house of Islam and show the empathy to your own brothers and even your own brothers which are not in your faith this is what Muslims ought to do make your agenda make your roadmap and live for others don't be the cattle which Allah has mentioned in Surah Al-An'am chapter number 6 verse number 179 that you will live like a cattle there is no benefit for you as cattle wake up in the morning go for their jobs procreate their babies nurture their babies and finally they die this is the job of an animal nature humans are beyond that Ar Rahman the merciful God Khalaq al insan has created humans Allah al bayan and it's taught you use of utterance. Ar Rahman, Allam al Quran. Rahman, the merciful God, has taught you Al Quran, the book which is criterion. Tabarak al Lazin, Nazal al Furqan, ala abdihi, la yakuna lil alameen al Nadira. Chapter 25, verse 1. It is Allah who has sent down this criterion of right and wrong to whole of the humanity so it may judge and it may warn the people who are fasiqun so who are perverted transgressors this book came for that ar rahman allam al quran merciful god has taught you al quran khalaq al insan who has created the human beings allamahu al bayan and taught him the use of utterance and taught them the use of utterance why allah mentioned this you know, what you call specifically. Why? You know why? Because there's a big difference between humans and other animals which atheists do not understand. What is that? That insan, Allah has given the ability to express the use of utterance with the fiery speech of Hitler. So many people brainwashed. I'm not taking his support, just generally giving you. With the spiry speech, fiery speeches of Mussolini, things revolutionized. With the fiery speeches of great scholars, people get brainwashed, either in the right direction or wrong direction. But effect is there. 
So this is what Allah says. And then you are able to express yourself. You see these atheists, ask them, these chimpanzees can do, can they, can they study you? Can they, you know, dissect your anatomy? You study them. They are not studying you. That is the main difference. Allah says in Surah Rum, I mean, Ayati, among his signs, the variance is in your colors, in your faces, and in every structure of your tongues are the miracles of God. This is it. We are able to express and our variances of faces makes us different species. Oh, I wonder, these atheists keep saying that we came from apes, maybe. So maybe apes and all that stuff. Ask them, which ape is like a similar, has a similar face? Why the only humans have similar, have different faces and all the apes have similar faces? Why? And you said that we came from them. So our ancestors were having same faces, but the later generation have all different faces. What kind of analogy is that? I said doom to your analogy and nonsensical concepts. The Ad Bani Adam is the creation of Allah for a specific purpose. Is what? This is the test to come to this world. Allah He created life and the death only to test you that which one or who is the one in good conduct.